Oh, hello and welcome to the Meditation Conversation, the podcast to support your spiritual revolution. I'm your host, Kara Goodwin, and today I'm joined by Krishna Avalon. Krishna is a licensed acupuncturist, certified holistic health coach, psych K facilitator, pranayama breathwork guide, and somatic practitioner who's guided over 26,000 patients and clients to achieve their life and wellness goals for more than 20 years. She helps clients to become their best and most empowered versions of themselves through a simple process of transforming the subconscious mind. Her work has currently expanded into subconscious transformation coaching, which helps clients make changes they wouldn't have been able to make through talk therapy or other styles of coaching that only work with the conscious mind. So welcome, Krishna. I'm so excited to be with you today. Thank you so much. That was really wordy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but thank you so much. Well, there's a lot in there in terms of the different modalities that you have that you work with people. And I'm very curious about the subconscious element to your work. Can we start by talking, can you talk to us a little bit just about the difference between the conscious and the subconscious mind? I love that. I am obsessed with the subconscious basically ever since I started learning about it. But the subconscious is where we hold our programs, right? So it's 97% of where we create our lives from. So if we were to compare ourselves to computers, which I don't love to do, but that's what my team is <laughs> <laughs> they say, you know, we're all programmed. So which programs are mm -hmm. running in that 97% of your mind where we hold our habits, our beliefs, our memories, our autopilot, our feedback loops. So for all running programs, which programs are we running and how contracted or limited or self-sabotaging are they? And for most people, they're pretty contracted just based on what we are taught through society, parenting, peers, media. And so we'll try to talk ourselves into something with the conscious mind that is maybe responsible for three to 5% of how we create life, but it's a lot harder and it takes a lot longer to make changes when you're just trying to do things or rule the world with your conscious mind. So the conscious mind is like the keyboard feeding information into the deep subconscious, which is 97% of how we create lives. I love that. And you're so right. I mean, I completely agree with the programming. And like you, it is a little bit like squeamish to think of, compare ourselves to, to computers. But what's amazing when we start thinking about the subconscious mind to me is that there are things that we just take for granted that we think is just how things are or how life works, or what reality is like, because that subconscious programming is so sneaky, and it's such a part of who we are that we can just take it for granted that we think that's how it is. So we can be telling ourselves, these self-sabotage was the example that you gave, but that we can be telling ourselves this story for years and years about who we are, or who other people are, or what how the world works, and we don't even maybe see it as a belief system. We just think it's what it is or that it's just fact or whatever. And so it's really empowering to then be able to even just understand, oh, there is part of me that is beyond my conscious awareness, beyond my choice, you know, my conscious choice that is contributing to how I see the world or how I how I see myself and so forth. Cool. So it's really fascinating. Fascinating. And there are different ways to work with your subconscious. So the subconscious is like a very trend topic or word right now, but most people don't have the tools to work with it. Um, the process that I was trained in is very simple. And unlike other processes, which didn't necessarily work for me, you get to create a new perception. perception. So just to your point, like what lens are you seeing life from? What is your experience? And in this kind of work, we can create a different belief so that we have a different perception and a different experience. Mm. Now, would this type of self-work be appropriate for everybody? Is, is there a certain type of person that's that would benefit from working with subconscious reprogramming or 
however we want to call it, more so than others? Yeah, and that's such a great question. And like my favorite people to work with are the people who have been in talk therapy for such a long time, but they're still triggered. They're still stuck. They're still repeating the same patterns. And it's because you're just conscious mind processing and that work and you're perpetuating the same stories often over and over because you're just talking about this stuff. And you're not having that tool to be able to peacefully unattach and move on. You don't have the neuroplasticity tool with conscious mind processing to have a new experience. And so I would say that this work is for anybody who does feel stuck in past or stuck in a feedback loop or a stress they can't let go of, whether that's from the past right now or in the future. And then for people who do love to grow they don't understand why other people can create life in a certain way and they haven't been able to it's because they're contracted in those beliefs usually around self-worth or deserving whether it's deserving of healthy relationships money being inspired trusting ourselves feeling safe to be seen like those are some of the big foundation ones that I get to work with people. I get to help people expand their self-worth and deservingness around those things so that it's so much easier to create life then from that way. And then there are other things you can do habit-wise to reinforce your new expanded belief and perception. But I wouldn't say it's just I've been in acupuncture forever too. It's not like acupuncture is for everyone. I think that subconscious expansion or transformation, yes, could be for everyone, but not everybody's ready to change and not everybody's ready to have a new experience. Some people, you know, they're just going to stay in their familiar comfort zone because that's what's safe, even if it's not healthy, even if it's not true. I'm obsessed with this work and I love it, but I would say that it's more for the people that are like, they're just ready to grow and move on and be an empowered creator of their life. I love that. So how is this different to traditional talk therapy? Right. So the process that I was trained in, we can talk as much or as little as we like, right? And then we do balances for the subconscious mind. And the whole goal of the balance is to get into what's called a whole brain state. And so that's when the left and the right hemispheres of your brain are communicating clearly. And it's very simple. There are different ways to get there depending on the balance, but it's from this stuff called brain gym. And you're conscious the whole time. It's not like hypnotherapy where we're getting into the subconscious through like a trance-like state. No, it's very simple and you're conscious. And then we're using that depending on your goal. Are we trying to peacefully unattach from a stress or trauma so that you can move on so that you can look at that stress or trauma and be like, oh yeah, that's super shit at that happen, but also I'm not triggered. I'm not panicking. I'm not avoiding. Like I can just look at it and be like, oh yeah, that sucked, but now I can move on. Or there are other balances, but the other main balance I use is a goal statement balance, which is for creating that lens or perception that we want to show up. So you can imagine that creating a goal statement of I trust myself or I feel safe to be seen or I'm worthy of support and being held or I'm worthy of healthy relationships or my boundaries are crystal clear. Like that that stuff changes people's lives in a really simple and subtle, but often just super powerful way. Often it's just very powerful when you're just out in the world and all of a sudden your boundaries are clear and you don't have guilt for saying no. I think it's a pretty big difference in a lot of people's lives. Whereas talk therapy does save people's lives for sure. But from what I understand and what I've seen since pandemic, everybody wants a talk therapist, seemingly. They're hard to find. They're expensive. Sometimes it's not even that helpful. Or people, again, are still stuck, triggered, anxious, angry, avoidant. And so while it saves lives, eventually people do need to like have other tools to be able to move. And, and that's what I find. And that's what I hear from all of the people who come to me is that exact thing, like they're in talk therapy and yet they're still on prescriptions, they're still super anxious, they're still triggered by like everything. And it's not a judgment, it's just what I'm seeing come to me. I was trying to find a somatic practitioner for my teenager 
it was it took me months of reaching out to therapists and her sliding scale therapist who was great but he's like this white guy straight out of college and his sliding scale was like two hundred and fifty dollars for 40 minutes mm. and so to me because i've been a practitioner forever because i usually have a lesson come through for myself that I need to work through in the shadow and then embody and integrate. And then without a fail ever, it's exactly what starts showing up in my clinic or my practice is people who are trying to move through that shadow or lesson themselves. That's what people need. Just this simple way to do the heavy lifting and deep digging in the subconscious. And then you can use other things to reinforce this new perception that you have. And that that would just take so much longer trying to work with the conscious mind and it might not even happen. Yeah. I love so many points that you made, one of them being the whole brain integration. And but what you just said about how things will show up for you and then ultimately that is applicable to how you need to help people. And it's as you were talking about that whole whole brain integration, I was I thought back to two days ago when, because this will happen to me too. Sometimes it's on the podcast. Sometimes it's in my work with people as individuals, but where something will show up for me and then it's like, oh my God, that is exactly relevant to what just happened. But my finger, my index finger was, has the last few days just been kind of moving on its own. And not all the time, but it's like an involuntary reaction where it'll just flutter a little bit. And two nights ago when I was starting to fall asleep, I was in, was just intuitively focusing on both hemispheres of my brain and having them both be active at the same time. And there was something within me that was like, because my finger wouldn't stop moving and it was like, Get both of your both sides of your brain working together and see what happens. And when I could hold that, it stopped completely. And Mm -hmm. it's something that like because I was in that very relaxed state going into the theta state, going it was like it was the only thing that I could needed to concentrate on at that moment. And I was like, oh, I wonder how easy I'll be able to do this tomorrow on the fly if this starts happening again. And it was harder. Because, you know, if I'm just going about my day and I'm doing other things, it's harder for me to really tune in and be like, okay, now my whole brain is is working together. There's balance and wholeness in there. But it was fascinating because it was like if any time I could get into that state, my finger would completely stop. <laughs> and now here it is where you're talking about the importance of that whole brain and how it can help us overcome everything you know, emotionally and, and trauma and everything that we're trying to work through. But in and my experience was even physical, even with physical things, that whole brain working together is so helpful. So do you use, I'm wondering, because you mentioned brain gym. Yeah. I it's think a book that d- and that's where. Oh, it's a it's book? It's a book and I forget the author's name, <laughs> but the site K process is a combination of a couple of things. And one of them do they it does include exercises that get into that whole brain state and they come from the gym but that we also use muscle testing there are some balances that are like kind of energy work related like bringing your higher self so it just depends on the balance we're doing but mostly it's muscle testing and then the whole brain state process mm-hmm. and then we muscle test again to make sure there's been a shift And do you have, I love muscle testing and I feel like I'm not great at it. (laughs) I feel like my intellect gets, or my own like conscious desires get in the way. And I'm sure that's something that people deal with all the time. So are there any suggestions that you have in terms of effective, effective muscle testing that we can trust a little bit better than? (laughs) No, no, I love that so much because many years ago, some Buddy did it to me. I think it was a naturopath checking supplements, which is often how many people have experienced muscle testing. But in say K, we're taught that we're doing it together. And so 
Yeah, our body's relaxed. Our chin is parallel to the ground and the eyes are looking down. And make sure you're hydrated. So we're never necessarily, we're not testing wrong, but we might be testing inaccurately. So when I learned this, and then I was like, oh, this is actually accurate. Because you can't lie to the muscles and you can't lie to the subconscious. And so that's what blows people's mind when I am in person doing, I can do these sessions virtually or, or in person. But in person, when I'm muscle testing, I'm pressing on a person's arm while their body's relaxed, chin parallel, eyes looking down. And what blows their minds is that like they're trying so hard to have a response and they cannot because of the muscles on the subconscious, which you cannot lie to. So it's pretty cool. And then when it's virtual, I'm just asking to muscle test on someone's behalf like a surrogate. Mm-hmm. Not like channeling your energy or anything like that. It's just super simple, super clear. And are there things that like a person, if they're if they want to learn to muscle test themselves, are there is it just like what you said where you relax and look down and you know shift your eyes down and keep your chin parallel to the floor? Sometimes people will test inaccurately. I've noticed if they haven't drank enough water. And so if they're testing like weak, for instance, which would be no to their own name, which doesn't usually happen, then I'll just have them take a drink of water and then we'll muscle test again. And then they're strong, which is yes, my name is Christian. And then you're testing strong. Um, sometimes if people come up and they're just like so caffeinated, one of my clients yesterday had like a ton of coffee. She wasn't testing inaccurately, but I did have to have her drink water a couple of times. So can be like too excitable but mostly it's really accurate Mm. and it's so weird and hard to trust sometimes because it's so simple like even for me I'm a very skeptical like mind and so it took me a while to be like is this really that's all we had to do to expand Mm. incredibly contracted limiting belief about myself that I've had all my life and it's been incredibly self-sabotaging but it has repeatedly worked for myself and for others and Even knowing absolutely 100% intuitively that I wanted to train in this process and it was already changing my life through the trainings, I still wanted to offer that transformation of stress balance to probably 15 of my patients just to see what would happen. Because I'd been an acupuncturist already for 20 years and it was like this thing I could do with a blindfold like really well and it was just this well-oiled track, right? And I just had to have more growth. And then that the feedback that I was getting without even asking was so incredible that I was like, oh, okay, now I can trust it. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, the muscle testing just is basic because we start with that to establish a clear communication with the subconscious mind to get that clear yes and no. And when people can't, they cannot control the yes and the no because we're talking to the subconscious. They're like, what? Mm, that's really fascinating. Right. I, I've just noticed I, I started working with a pendulum again. I, I pick it up and put it down type of thing. And a, a pendulum, I feel like, is a very similar concept. And I I have a hard time with it because I know that I can influence it. Even though I'm perfectly still, I can tell because I've tested it where I'm like, what if I just want to make it go yes? Or what if I intend that it goes clockwise? And it'll just start doing it, you know, and then I'm like, okay, now counterclockwise and I'll wait a minute. And then it just starts going counterclockwise. And I'm like, so while I'm waiting for it to do something, I I have kind of a guess about what I think the answer is. And it's really difficult for me to like put that aside, but also get a response. You know what I mean? Because I feel like I withhold my energy so much not wanting to influence it that then like nothing's happening with it you know so it's this balance that I'm having a hard time Mm -hmm. overcoming I get that because I love pendulums too and I have a couple that I never use but I think some of them and it has tested inaccurately for me I do get what you're saying but it's so cool how you can just be sitting there and be like thinking in your mind yes and it's going in one direction and then you're like stop and it's stop you know it's crazy but it has given me wrong answers before. <laughs> yeah, but so you found muscle testing to be a lot more accurate, so, it sounds like. Yeah, and I don't know how you do it, but I like to do this one. Right. So people 
through this one. But like for me, I'm just using this. Okay, so, so that's to insert just for anybody who's listening um, and not watching. But the uh, so you like looping your fingers together and then you try like your index and thumb. Pull. Yep. And then I'll just pull. And be uh -huh. like, my name is Krishna and I'll pull and it's strong. And mm -hmm. I say, my name is Dylan and I pull. It's weak and my fingers come apart. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Super, <laughs> super amazing. So, so then you've got the whole brained part to the site K and working with the subconscious. Well, so that's kind of like, I guess, the foundation of making change is getting brain, the spheres of the brain working together. And then in terms of like introducing the new program or the, the higher thought, the, the, what we're wanting to change, are, is that more affirmations or how are you helping people in, in the reprogramming? Yeah, that's such a great question as well, which is where I think it is super valuable to have a person who sees you and hears you and is very intuitive because there are many things you could come up with as your goal statement. And the best statement for you is actually, it's going to be the most impactful. So we would talk about what you want. And then through mm -hmm. that, I would reflect back to you and come up with the best words that you feel the most connected and resonant with. Like when I read it back to you, you're like, yeah. I'm like, is that what you want? Yeah. And I can tell when people light up or I can tell if they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. let's keep playing with the words because words are alchemy. And that's, I believe, where like some of the magic stuff comes in because I did cite K with my teacher when I first heard about it. I looked it up. There was one practitioner in Portland. It was my teacher. And I went and saw her and I honestly didn't notice any difference. And I just believe that we have space holders and we have people who facilitate us. And when we feel safe and when we feel seen, that is hugely healing. She was my teacher. And she taught me all three levels. I'm going to do one more level in November specific to health and wellness, but she just wasn't my facilitator. And so I just know being a practitioner for so long, like there are a bazillion acupuncturists out there, but like, I know my gifts are in space holding and being intuitive. And so that help that does help people feel safe and heal quicker, or get to their goal quicker. Yeah. Are you still doing acupuncture as well? I am a little bit, <laughs> but I'm really from going into conscious therapy. That's what my direction is for how I want to guide my practice and guide the people that I want. I mean, it's just where I'm like the most inspired. And I felt, oh, maybe it would be really helpful to people if I got a mental health certification or training. And so I am also about to study this thing called internal family systems. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Again, it's just like another lens for helping people identify parts. They call it parts of themselves. And when we're fragmented, we're burdened. A lot of it is about where we are like creating protectors or managers or firefighters, basically as protection for the parts of us that have been exiled. And so we want to unblend some of those attachments so that the, they call it the self, capital L, S, can lead, can mm -hmm. come through. And so using that with subconscious work, I believe it's going to be so cool. And just having that alternative to traditional talk therapy, which a lot of people are just really wanting to make these changes and don't know how. And I believe it doesn't take 20 years because I know how much I've been able to grow in a short amount of time. This is the kind of stuff I've been waiting for all my life. Yeah. Well, and when we talk about the subconscious and working with the subconscious for healing, it also makes me think about hypnotism or hypnosis, I should say. So are there similarities with hypnotism with any of this or just two separate modalities? There are. And I tried hip, I tried hypnosis also, mm -hmm. like a times. It was nice. But then one of the first times I was unconscious and I did not like that. Mm -hmm. She made a recording for me, but I like to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I believe in healing in my sleep and I love meditation and the theta state is so powerful, right? It's where we're the most influenced easily. Mm -hmm. But for a healing process, I would love to be conscious. Not to say that falling asleep during a massage isn't very powerful, but mm -hmm. 
looking at hypnosis, you're often unconscious. Yeah. So deep into theta, whereas this is very conscious and very simple. And I tend to like things that are very simple. Mm -hmm. Like to me, acupuncture, yes, it's this ancient medicine, but it's about the flow of energy. And Mm -hmm. so that was my first love. And it would have taken something super special for me to switch paths. But like this being as simple and powerful as as it is, Mm -hmm. it's part of what you would have to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, can you talk a little bit about neuroplasticity and the importance of that and the role of that in your in your? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what it's all about is creating the brain's ability to have a new experience. So we all have those like paths in the forest in our mind that are very clear that we've been down a million times. It doesn't mean that it's the best path for us. It just means that's what we've taken as the path a million times. And what this kind of work does is it creates neuroplasticity, that brain's ability to change. So you really can teach an old dog new tricks if that dog wants to change. Mm -hmm. And so that's the beautiful part of this work. And again, unlike other subconscious processes, which might help you peacefully unattach from things or uncouple, like EMDR would say uncouple, Um, hypnotherapy, again, just to have a different experience in this work with Psyche. Hey, I love that we can create a goal statement, like the lens that we want to have and create that belief in the subconscious mind so that it's possible. And through that process of the whole brain postures, creating that neuroplasticity so that we can have that experience. Okay. All right. And what is for, if there's somebody who's listening and they're like, wow, this sounds like it's exactly what I need. What sort of process is it for people? Like how many sessions, how long per session, like how long until they start to see some change? What can you say about that? Usually people see it change right away. Sometimes they don't notice the change until all of a sudden, a couple of months later, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm just walking past that place that was a big source of contention for me. And I'm like not even thinking about it. So really change happens right away. It's just a matter of, are you aware enough to notice it? Some people just do a session with me and they'll tell me a year later, oh, I'm still, like I still am integrating that very powerful session that we have. Other people will sign up for 10 sessions and they'll do three, four, five weekly and then spread them out because that will get to all areas of your life. And 10 sessions is really not that much for anything, but for people who want to work with all aspects of their lives and do big excavating, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, That is the way a lot of people go. So you can just check it out for one session. You are definitely going to notice change. Some people will do three. And then there's other people that are like, this is it for me. Let's do 10. And And then I bring a bunch of things to like, I bring in practices for people if they need it to connect with their bodies, experiencing with their brain. So like a somatic practice or a meditation to reinforce what we're doing with the psyche. Mm -hmm. And they're individual sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And if people want to find out more about working with you, how would they do that? I mean, definitely just my website. And then there's a resource page on there with some free practices, so some somatic meditations, some breathwork practices, um, neuroplasticity practices. I'll, put your, I'll yeah. put your website in the show notes, but in case anybody's just listening and they're there, can you say what your website is? Yeah, it's just my name, KrishnaAvalon.com. And then that's my handle on Instagram. I'm there when I feel like it. Often I post in my stories like people's testimonials or like a goal statement that someone had for the day and um, how powerful that's been for them. People do like to read about those. But those are the main places I like to have that resource page just so you can get more of a sense of me and how I work. Beautiful. Good. Well, thank you so much, Krishna, for talking to us about Site K and the subconscious. This has been really beautiful and very informative appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Karen. It's fun.